Hello, everyone. So today I want to just do a quick sharing on how to uh, digitize the Good Time Journal in Designing Your Life. The tools I'm going to use today are the Airtable, which is free. You can use the free version and Excel. For those of you who are not too familiar with Airtable, it's an online service that you can create a database. It has this Excel look to it. So if you are quite familiar with formulas and formatting with Excel, you should be okay when you start using Airtable. So basically I have Airtable open here and I call this Good Time Journal AT, just for a name for now. AT stands for Airtable. So I would have three tables created. The main table, just have it called table one for now, but you can call it anything you want. Energy, and engagement and I'll go over them one by one. So basically just like the Good Time Journal, the main table is pretty much like a journal format. I have the activities that I'm doing during the day and I also have the date and the time. Just to be easy to organize later on, I have the date so I can figure out what activities are done within a certain day. And I also put the time. It doesn't have to be exact, but putting the time, it's a good practice to help you to put things in a chronological order. And I also have duration for each activity. And I just want to say that uh, it doesn't have to be uh, a record of everything that you have done during the day. Even though I have 11 activities for this particular day, it could be less. It could be five, it could be eight, but I would recommend don't do less than four per day. And this is important for people who just start doing this. In the paper format, it's recommended that you do one page per day. If I remember right, they have like maybe eight to 10 entries per page. It may be a little bit uh, too much for people who just start doing this. So I usually recommend people doing at least four per day, maybe do one every other day or something like that. Or even if you think you absolutely just wanted to try it out, you can even do one page per week if you want. So in general, we recommend people to do one page per day. The more you do, the easier it is for, for you to discover yourself. So I have notes, which is very similar to the second line of each entry in the paper format. So one example would be like, okay, I wake up in the morning and this is like 7.30 in the morning and I do some reading and I read the news. Okay, so my energy level is quite high because I probably had a good night's sleep. So it's energy level four, and I'll go over uh, this later on yeah, in terms of the numbers. Engagement level, it's quite high. It's also four. Uh, the scale is actually one to five. So the news is interesting to me. And flow, this is also like a check and unchecked. So this is not flow yet. It's not check. We are doing more than just the good time journal. So I also have the energy engagement map going on on this side, which is reflecting the number of energy over here. I also put another column calling images. Just in case if you have the energy engagement map done, you could put that in this column if you want, or if there are any in anything that are interesting happening during that activity and you just want to take a snapshot, a picture of something that you've done and you really enjoyed and you can put it there as well, just to remind yourself what extremely interesting was like, okay? So I do that for each entry. For this energy engagement score, I actually do this as a lookup function and it's going back to this table over here. So the lookup is on the name column 
versus the the energy level, which is a, a number column. It basically says look up energy table, and then if it's four, look at the score, which is also four, and display that number. So this one is actually uh, automatically generated as you input. So basically for the energy table, I rated everything from five to zero, and then you have from minus one to minus five. So you can have positive energy and negative energy, right? So I just put it in a scale of one to five on the positive side and also one to five on the negative side. These are automatically populated by Airtable. So you don't really have to care about that. So energy level five, I would have five over here, so on and so forth. Negative five, I would have negative five over here. If it's neutral, it's zero and I'll have zero over here. And for the engagement table, I'll have the same thing. But this one, since I'm not doing the energy engagement map with the engagement score, so I do not put anything on this side. I just want to go back to this table later on and I'll be able to see. I want to find high engagement activities and I look at level five, level four, and I'll see the things that I, the activities that I did. In this example, it will be lunch and uh, working on presentation deck and uh, dinner reading and also reading over here. And you can see for this example, I have two readings and I don't know which one is which. So I could actually click on each one and pull out the record and see. So this one is actually the one in the morning and I was reading the news and the level five one is I was reading a novel before bed, 10, 30 PM. And I really enjoyed it. So that's why it was high engagement. And you can also see I put flow over here when I was working on presentation deck and also when I was reading the novel. Okay, so I found two activities that have flow in it. This column is actually quite important and do not skip this. Okay, if you're making a table, make sure you have this column flow. Uh, you can put a zero, one, or you could put it like a checkbox like this one for this energy engagement map. So I have all the scores lined up and for the free version of Airtable, unfortunately, I could not just do a graph right over here. Since I want to make this 100% free for everybody, so I would have to use an external app like Excel, for example, to help me to do this easier, I would have to create a different view. So you can see over here, I have uh, the main view, and I also do like an entry form kind of view. So if you don't like to input everything uh, on the Excel table like style, you can also do like an entry form. So this is the, like a simplified view for the energy engagement map. So basically I just took the main view and I hide the columns that I don't wanna see and make this kind of nice and easy, as compact as possible. So for this, I could just copy all these cells, just copy and paste. And then I will go to Excel and I just paste them over here. I could just easily create a chart with all the labels and everything. And, the, and I format the um, axis to make it nice and easy from zero to five and then from zero to negative five. It's just my personal preference. For, so for the activities that I find flow, I would just color them differently to make them green. So when I go back to this map, I could quickly tell which of the activities so engaging that I was in flow.
Okay, so on uh, with this graph, I could uh, export it, I could screen cap it as a JPEG and then go back to my main table. And remember we have this column over here with the images. So I could just stick it in one of these rows, probably maybe the first row or the, or the last row. Actually, for people who are not too familiar with the energy engagement map, maybe I could spend a couple of minutes just to share some of my experience on this one. So for this map, you don't really have to do it per day. You could just find like a very typical, typical day and do it once and then go back to it and do another one, let's say in, in another week or so. You don't have to do this every day, okay? So I just put the date over here and then uh, the title. And you can see during the day, it's going up and going down. And so you have some highlights and you have some low points during the day. So the takeaway, from reading this map, it's like this. First of all, you would not remember everything that happened during the whole day. If I just get off work, say I'm here just before dinner, I get off work and people ask me like, how was your day? I would probably say it was awesome because I put an activity that I really truly love at the very end of the day. I finished the day off with these activities. So basically you would only remember a couple of things. You will probably remember the uh, maybe one or two highlight during the day. And then you de definitely remember the last activities you have done. If you have a tough day or a very long day, it probably happened because one, there are some clusters, like for example, maybe over here that you stack one, activity with very negative energy, low engagement, one after another. So you will probably remember that as a highlight. And if the last task that you do before you get off work is also something that is very negative energy and low engagement, you will also remember that. So if that happens and, and people ask you, oh, how was your, how was your day? Meaning how was your work day? And you will probably say, Oh, it was horrible and it was just a long day for me, right? So there are some tricks to maybe it could help you to fix that. The first one is to do not stack tasks that you do not like one after another. If you can, if it's possible, put something that is positive in between these two to level out the effect or right after this one, you have, you do something that you really like. So you kind of like erase the negative energy from the previous activities because you now you go to something you really enjoy doing. So that was one trick. And another one would be like changing the environment. For example, if it's a meeting and somehow the, the meeting room by itself is very dark environment and it's giving you this negative vibe, it may be helpful if you if you can change the, the place that you do meet or even for like a conference call, the place that you sit down to make the call maybe is so tight and cramped that it actually uh, already gives you a, a feeling that you're constrained in some, some place. So maybe take that phone call to somewhere else if you can change your mood a little bit. And that's actually a, a third way to do it. And some people say if they have a task that is kind of long and repetitive and it doesn't have to be finished in one single session, maybe you can divide that into two activities and then do it in different times of the day or put them in between higher energy and higher engagement tasks. So that would also help. So that's why you would do this energy engagement map. So that's all I have to share today. And hopefully this is helpful to you. And I really enjoy using Airtable. And if you are an advanced user of Airtable and you have more tips and tricks, please let me know. Uh, see if I can improve this Good Time Journal database even better.